11. Who shot a Carter County man inside his home? This morning, the steps investigators are taking and how the victim is doing. Breaking overnight, a two-year-old found unconscious in the pool at an Ohio hotel. At least 16 people hospitalized. What police believe happened. A shortage of substitute teachers now worsened by the pandemic. How local schools are stepping up to the plate. And Omicron sweeping through hospitals. Ballot Health now taking drastic action with more than 800 employees sick when they think things might turn around. From WCYB, this is News 5 This Weekend. And good Sunday morning. I'm Caleb Perney. We begin this morning in the Storm Track 5 Weather Center with meteorologist Jessica Burns talking about a potential warm up out there. Yeah, that's right, Caleb. We'll be seeing a little bit warmer of a day today once we get into it. However, this morning is definitely very cold. Here's King Street and Boone. You can see a little bit of snow, some melting going on in the streets on our Ashley Home Store weather camera. Kingsport, good morning to you. And it's a very cold morning, 14 degrees right now in the Tri-Cities. Seeing a little bit of clouds overhead with calm winds in the Tri-Cities. Other places are seeing a little bit of a breeze that's making it feel a slightly cold colder than that, which you can see across the region. We're all dealing with really cold temperatures. 10 right now in Marion, 17 in Richlands, 14 in Bristol, Greenville. You're our warm spot at 21 degrees this morning. But when you factor in the slight breeze in some spots, you are feeling like the single digits in some places like Wise, feeling like seven, feeling like nine in Clintwood and also Grundy and feeling like eight up in Richlands. But where the winds are calm, the feels like temperature and the actual temperature are much closer. Once we get into the rest of the day, though, we will be warming up. We'll see a little bit of sunshine. We're seeing some clouds overhead right now on satellite and radar. But once we hit the afternoon, look what our temperatures do. We go up into the low to mid 40s this afternoon. And as we go into the next several days, we'll actually get even warmer. We're going to feel a little bit a little bit more like spring once we get into the work week. And we'll also be watching for the possibility for some rain and not snow rain. We'll have all the details coming up in just a few minutes. Elizabethan police report the victim of a shooting inside his home is now doing better and is in stable condition. The shooting happened in a home on VIP Road in the Milligan area. Police say the 30-year-old male victim was shot multiple times. They say the suspect is a thin white man who was wearing a ski mask. Police do not believe there is a threat to the public. The victim has recovered enough that they were able to speak with him. They say they appreciate any tips. A Greene County man was shot by police in Nashville. Authorities identified the suspect as 37-year-old Landon Estep. Officers say they tried for more than half an hour Thursday to de-escalate the situation. But nine officers from three agencies fired at Estep when police say he quickly pulled an object from his right pocket. Estep has a lengthy criminal history. Greene County records show he was booked into the county jail 29 times between 2002 and 2018 when authorities believed he moved from Greene County. The TBI is investigating the shooting. A Tennessee high school student was detained by police after bringing a knife to school on Friday. School officials say Tennessee High went into lockdown after reports a student had a gun inside the school. The school resource officer and Bristol, Tennessee police responded immediately. That's when they found that the student actually had a knife. The school official says that police confiscated the knife and detained the student before lifting the lockdown. A Smith County man is now facing multiple rape charges. Authorities say Jaron Corey Logan of Chilhowee is charged with five counts of rape, five counts of fornication, and one count of sodomy. Sheriff Ch uh, Chip Schuler says his office learned in October of a past sexual assault against a juvenile female. Logan is now being held without bond in the Southwest Virginia Regional Jail as he awaits his trial. 
The Holston Habitat for Humanity dedicated two Kingsport homes yesterday. The homes were built on the same street in walking distance of each other. 200 volunteers from a dozen churches and businesses pitched in the 4,500 volunteer hours to make the projects happen. It was a full house for the two back-to-back -back ceremonies. They were full of applause, smiles, and tears of joy. One home is for a family of seven. The other, the first home Habitat has built for a deaf person. I'm so happy about this new house. I'm really excited. It's my, gonna be my, my new home is ready. The families went through a home buyer class, saved up for the down payment, and helped build the homes. Ballot Health expects the Omicron COVID-19 wave in our region to peak this week. Take a look at this. Our region broke the record for COVID-19 hospitalizations on Wednesday, and at last check Friday, 422 people were hospitalized. 56 people were on ventilators, and eight kids were hospitalized. More than 85% of those hospitalized are unvaccinated. Now Ballot is facing crisis staffing. 834 staff members are out because of COVID-19, waiting on test results. It's putting a huge strain on doctors, nurses, and staff at hospitals across our region. In addition, the deadline has now passed for healthcare workers to get their first COVID-19 shot. That's under a federal mandate. Ballot officials say 1,000 employees have not been vaccinated. They have until February 11th to get the vaccine, or apply for a medical or religious exemption. It's a very confusing statistic. It's easy to conclude, well, then why get vaccinated? Because they're getting COVID. The vaccine may not and does not prevent the spread of this variant. I think we've all learned that. But what it does do is it, it, it mitigates the likelihood that you'll get admitted to the hospital or become very seriously ill. CEO Alan Levine says they are going to do whatever they can to protect the safety of their patients and make sure they are adequately staffed to care for the people in our region. A unique way of saving lives in combating the drug epidemic. Preston Ayers explains in this week's Road to Recovery coming up. And local schools stepping up to solve a problem across the country. Find out how you can help next on News 5 This Weekend. Road to Recovery is sponsored by Overmountain Recovery, a medication-assisted treatment facility located in the Appalachian Highlands. Drugs laced with fentanyl are driving a surge in overdose deaths. News 5's Preston Air shows us how a new alert system is saving lives in this week's Road to Recovery. During the pandemic, we've seen more isolation and more drug use. Fentanyl is throwing gasoline on that fire. There's been a really concerning increase in contaminated drug supplies as well as overdoses, particularly during the pandemic. Synthetic opioids, primarily fentanyl, linked to a growing number of overdoses. Officials at the Western North Carolina-based Seek Healing say members of a harm reduction community would make each other aware when they were seeing a spike in overdoses and suspected that a bad batch of drugs was going around. But they say what was missing was getting that information out to the greater community. There was a need to get the alerts out of just the provider community and into the hands of people who are actually making these decisions and purchasing these substances on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why Seek Healing has launched an overdose spike alert system across western North Carolina. They send free text alerts when they get a tip from a community partner that there have been eight or more overdoses within 24 hours. This is a really important just piece of public health information for all of us to be aware of, whether we're people who use these kinds of drugs, whether we love people who use these kinds of drugs, or whether we're just trying to be responsible members of the community. Taking care of each other, the philosophy that drives Seek Healing, it's also inspired other services that recently partnered with another organization, the WNC Listening Line. It's a non-crisis emotional support line manned by local volunteers for people who are struggling with substance abuse and isolation. People who call a couple times a day just to ask what time it is or to let someone on the listening line staff know that, you know, they're going to run an errand or they're going to the doctor. Um, and it just really highlights the level of loneliness that a lot of people are living with. Preston Ayers, News 5, WCYB. Another bitter cold morning today, but good news if you don't like the cold, there's a big warm-up in store. We'll have all the details coming up in a few minutes. At 11. 
Schools across the region are struggling to find enough substitute teachers as COVID-19 causes the number of teachers out sick to rise. Local school systems are now taking steps to recruit more people to fill in. Johnson City School Board in a special called meeting voting to increase pay for substitutes by $10 per day to try to recruit more people. It's now up to $80 per day and $110 for certified teachers. We also increased the scope of who could get that $110. So now any certified teacher who would like to substitute in Johnson City can get that, that extra pay. The lack of subs is a problem schools have faced for years. A combination of low pay and a lack of respect from some students pushing them out. But now COVID-19 means more need because more teachers are out sick, combined with fewer people willing to go inside schools. It was a challenge before COVID, but since COVID, um, you know, a lot of our folks who we counted on, understandably so, but they didn't want to come into schools and classrooms, and they kind of said we're going to take, especially that first year off, some we haven't gotten back yet. Unicoi County Director of Schools John English says often principals have to make tough decisions about how to cover classes when there aren't enough substitutes, stretching staff, and sometimes using administration to fill the role. They are also raising pay. Every day you come in, sometimes you don't know till first thing in the morning and you've got to fill three or four spots can't find a sub and so you're looking at your entire staff trying to figure out this person's planning periods here I can cover them for this period this person's is here I can send them here we have teachers that are out we have teachers that are covering classes with some of their planning time or their their lunch time and we want to make sure that we're getting as many substitutes many qualified substitutes in as we can Johnson City Schools are hoping the extra money will attract the help they need a training class for substitute teachers last week brought in 15 people, but it's still not nearly enough. The next round of applications opens Monday. Caleb Perney, News 5, WCYB. Lots of people woke up to wintry and cold scenes yesterday morning and sent some great photos. Here's one that Alita sent in from Belfast. Great photo. Thank you for sending this in. If you've taken any weather photos and want us to take a look at them, go ahead and send them to us. WCYB.com slash chime in. That's where you go to send us your pictures and maybe your photo could be featured on air or online. Now this morning definitely is not as cold and wintry, but it is still very cold in some spots. Here's Marion on our Ashley Home Store weather camera now in some of the higher elevations there's a little bit of a breeze going on so even though it's 12 or even though it's now 13 degrees in Marion uh, oh, now the wind has changed but some spots are dealing with some gusty winds making the teens feel like the single digits this morning so keep that in mind if you live in the higher elevations this morning but we are seeing some clouds overhead on satellite and radar and as we go into the rest of the day today we'll actually see quite a bit of sunshine and some warmer temperatures as well take a look at what our highs are going to do we'll go up into the low to mid 40s by this afternoon, which is much warmer than where we were at yesterday. Overnight tonight is going to be another cold night, but definitely not nearly as cold as nights past. Lows will drop down into the low to mid 20s across the region. And as we go into the next several days, actually we'll see a little bit of a warm up in store. So our threat tracker is at a medium only for this morning, just because it's still pretty cold. But as we go into the rest of the day today, it'll drop down to a low and then we'll just see our temperatures go up from there. Look at what our highs do on Tuesday all the way through Thursday. Highs go into the mid to upper 50s, which is above where we should be. Normally we're in the upper 40s. We're going to feel a whole lot like spring, but notice a drop in temperatures from Thursday to Friday. That's because we're watching a cold front come through that'll not only bring in some cooler temperatures, but also shake up our dry weather pattern that we're going to be seeing. We'll see actually rain move in from Wednesday through Thursday as that cold front front slides through. Definitely seeing that spring like weather with that cold front that's going to be arriving. We're going to watch as it develops across the Midwest and then as it comes a little closer to our region, we'll see some uh, rain out ahead of it arrive late Wednesday. The front itself is going to arrive on Thursday and into Friday. Notice by Friday morning, we'll be seeing the backside of the cold front. We'll be seeing winds coming from the northwest that'll bring in cool air and transition some of that rain over to a little bit of a quick 
wintry mix early Friday morning before the front slides out in the afternoon. We're starting to get a better idea of how much rain we're going to see, and it's looking pretty decent. Most places seeing around a half an inch to an inch of rain by the time we get to Friday. However, some locally higher amounts are possible, especially along the Kentucky-Virginia border. Around two inches of rain is possible in some spots. So very uh, decent amount of rain, but we're not going to be seeing that today. We'll see lots of sunshine. 44 degrees by the time we hit the afternoon. Overnight tonight is going to get pretty cold, dropping down into the 20s, the low 20s. Uh, but as we go into the next several days, our daytime highs are going to warm up. So will all our overnight temperatures as well. We'll go up into the 30s and 40s for our overnight temperatures by the time we hit midweek. We'll see lots of sunshine to start the week, and then cloud cover is going to increase through the day on Tuesday as the cold front gets a little bit closer. The front will arrive Wednesday into Thursday, and then we'll see that cold air come into our region by the time we hit next weekend. Why did people step forward to be alternate electors for Donald Trump after Joe Biden won the 2020 election? A look inside hearings seeking to find out. Storm Track 5 weather cameras sponsored by your Tri-Cities Ashley Home Store. My New this morning, multiple people are in the hospital after being found unconscious around the pool area of an Ohio hotel. Police say they first responded to a report of an unconscious two-year-old in the water. Then more calls came into 911 reporting multiple unconscious people in and around the pool. People reported feeling dizzy and having a burning sensation in their throats. After an uh, investigation by Marysville Fire and, and uh, Worthington Hazmat, uh, they determined the um, cause was carbon monoxide at uh, dangerously high levels. At least 16 people received medical care, including seven who are in critical condition. New subpoenas have been issued by the Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. The committee subpoenaed 14 people from seven states who submitted false slates to the National Archives claiming to be alternate electors for former President Trump. He did not win those states. The committee wants to know whose idea it was. I want to know uh, who was behind this plot um, to overturn the election. This didn't just randomly happen that, you know, people in various states decided, well, I guess I'll just do a bogus uh, uh, certificate. No, this was coordinated and planned, and we'd like to know every aspect of that. Representative Zoe Lofgren says a clear picture is starting to emerge about the intention of the false slates. The terrifying stories inside a Pennsylvania bridge collapse. That story next on News 5 This Weekend. The people who survived a bridge collapse in Pittsburgh say they are lucky to be alive. Ten people, including some first responders, were hurt, but investigators say it could have been much worse. He realized and thought he was going to die. Erin Perry shares what her parents, Tyrone and Velva Perry, both 69 years old, experienced as they were traveling across the Fern Hollow Bridge, which sits over Frick Park early this morning. They were in a truck hit the bottom and then my father who was driving said that after they hit the bottom then there was a car that came barreling towards them flipping over and then it landed right beside their truck when the accident happened they were directed to walk out of the vehicle so my mother with her fractured vertebrae and my father with his fractured vertebrae walked themselves out of the vehicle until they were able to get to a space to sit down. Aaron says it took over an hour to get them to safety and transported to the hospital. Meantime, also on the bridge at the time of the collapse, this Allegheny County Port Authority bus driven by Daryl Luciani, two passengers on board. He told KDKA Radio he was supposed to be off today, but came into work to make some overtime. It's still dark and it just felt like it was uh, just a lot of banging and bumping and uh, yeah, I had one of those 64 buses to have the you know the you know so the back end of the bus was probably you know bouncing around as well and uh i just finally you know came to a stop and i, I guess i i didn't realize till later on that i was probably 10 or 12 feet from going 
over the ravine. Luciani says emergency responders came to the rescue strategically getting everyone out safely. They crawled up to us God. and they got a rope and they tied it to the railing and brought it down to our door. And they got us off the bus, and then we had to wait for a ladder to come. They had to bring a ladder over to us and prop it up, and we had to climb down. It could have ended tragically, and I am, I am just thankful to God that I'm still alive. The drastic steps local hospitals are now taking amid a record COVID-19 wave. How they're making up for more than 800 staff out sick. And the countries that may soon join NATO as Russia bears down on Ukraine. That's in our next half hour on News 5. Coming up this week on Full Measure, many advocates are pushing for programs that would pay black Americans reparations due to our history of slavery. But the issue has created a surprising divide among civil rights activists. We investigate both sides. If you haven't noticed, we as a nation are getting older, and that's reflected among our elected politicians, many of them in their 80s, well past what's considered retirement age for most. Scott Thuman examines the more mature side of Washington. And one growing danger in America's border crisis surrounds stash houses. Cartel criminals smuggle humans across the border, treating them like cargo, holding them in tight quarters to be distributed across the nation. An inside look at what's happening. All that coming up this week on Full Measure. From WCYB, this is News 5 This Weekend. And welcome back. It's now 7.30. I'm joined by meteorologist Jessica Burns. And a bit cold this morning, mm -hmm. but you're saying it, it might be better this afternoon? Yeah, it's definitely not as cold as what we saw yesterday overall, but we will eventually warm up. We are a little cold this morning. Here's the view over Holston Mountain. You can see the sun starting to rise on our Ashley Home Store weather camera. And we'll turn over to Pennington Gap. You can see not a lot going on. Streets are quiet. A little bit of snow still on the ground on the sidewalks. And that's because it's still really cold. 10 degrees right now at the Lee County Airport. Lots of places is really cold this morning. We're seeing temperatures for the most part in the teens, 17 in Rogersville, 10 in Jonesville, 9 degrees though up in Clintwood. And some of the higher elevations are dealing with a little bit of a breeze. That's something the valleys are not seeing. So our temperature and our feels like temperatures in the valleys are very close. However, up in the higher elevations, it's feeling a little bit cooler, feeling like 8 in Grundy, 9 in Richlands, 9 is the feels like temperature also in Marion. We are dealing with a little bit of clouds overhead this morning, but as we go Going into the rest of the day today, we'll still see lots of sunshine. So if you're headed out to church this morning, make sure you are grabbing a jacket because it is cold. By the time we hit noon, we'll be up in the 30s, around the mid 30s as well we'll be. But as we go further into the day, we're really going to warm up our highs. We'll be in the low to mid 40s, much warmer than what we saw yesterday. And in fact, as we go into the next several days, we're even going to warm up even more than that. It'll feel more like spring and we'll actually see some spring weather because we're going to be seeing some rain move into our region. Haven't seen that in a couple of weeks. We've been dealing with snow. Well, the snow is going to go away and we'll be seeing some rain as we go into the middle and end of the week. We'll have all the details coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Jessica. Omicron is sweeping across our region, pushing case and positivity rates to an all-time high. Now Ballot Health is facing a staffing crisis. News 5's Kristen Kwan has more. Ballot Health says they have reached a new record of COVID-19 hospitalizations. So this current surge has really surpassed anything that we have seen before. Omicron affecting not just patients, but the entire healthcare system. It's frustrating and heartbreaking to see patients who go to the ER and wait hours upon hours before they can be treated. Um, it's not that that's something we want to see happen. It's it's our nurses and doctors are prioritizing the best they can to take care of the people who are most acute and most at risk. CEO Alan Levine says they are facing what he calls crisis staffing. 834 team members are out because of COVID related issues. 79% of those team members who are at home with COVID are vaccinated. And, it, and, and it's, it, it's a very confusing statistic. It's easy to conclude, well then why get vaccinated? because they're getting COVID. The vaccine may not and does not prevent the spread of this variant. I think we've all learned that. But what it does do is it, it, it mitigates the likelihood that you'll get admitted to the hospital 
or become very seriously ill. Now, Ballot faces another challenge, the vaccine mandate for health care workers. 1,000 employees have not been vaccinated or applied for an exemption. Obviously, we're very concerned about that. Um, I think our opinion on the vaccine mandate is, is well established. We, we've sent comments to CMS on what our concerns are, and, and we made recommendations as to steps we think they could take to help. Um, it seems quite illogical at a time where we're, we're having to put crisis staffing in place to then turn around and ask a thousand people to leave. In the meantime, health leaders are encouraging people to mask up, get vaccinated, and avoid the ER unless you have an immediate emergency. We are going to do whatever we need to do to protect the safety of our patients and to make sure that we are adequately staffed to care for the needs of the people in this region. Healthcare workers have until February 11th to either get their vaccine or get an exemption. Ukraine's president now asking for calm as fears grow of a potential Russian invasion. The countries that now want to join NATO's side coming up. President Biden says he's going to shift some U.S. troops in Eastern Europe, though not sending any to Ukraine as the Russian buildup on the border intensifies. Meanwhile, America's top general is warning a potential Russian invasion could be horrific. NBC's Richard Engel explains. If it is a bluff, Russia keeps going all in with more troops heading to Ukraine's border. And President Biden saying he's going to shift U.S. troops in response. I'll be moving U.S. troops to Eastern Europe and the NATO countries in the near term. Meanwhile, the Pentagon sounding what has become a daily alarm about Russian forces. There's a potential that they could launch uh, on very, very little uh, warning. That's possible. A potential attack that could result in significant civilian casualties. It would be horrific. It would be terrible. But Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, accused the U.S. and NATO of creating panic that's harming Ukraine's economy. They just say that tomorrow there will be war, he says. This is panic. How much does it cost our state? The mixed signals are leaving Ukrainians unsure of how seriously to take the Russian threat. It seems there will be no military invasion, says Marina. I believe this. I want to believe this. But Alexander Vizirov, an army veteran, says it's not an option to relax and stay calm. Here in eastern Ukraine, life appears normal. Shops and restaurants are open. There's traffic in the streets. But people are starting to get nervous. NATO says other Russian regional neighbors could be admitted on an expedited timeline as tensions grow. NATO Secretary General says Finland and Sweden have a high level of interoperability with NATO. And if the two nations want to join, it could be a quick decision. It's a possible leverage play as Russia parks troops at Ukraine's border. When you see to what degree it, they already meet NATO standards, uh, uh, it should be possible to allow them into our lines uh, 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 quite quickly. The United States and NATO allies say a Russian invasion of Ukraine will not be tolerated. They spent weeks supplying Ukrainian defenses. President Biden promises the harshest economic sanctions Russia has ever seen if Putin steps across the border. Recently, it's felt like we've been put in the blast cooler. It's been so cold out there. But good news, if you don't like cold weather, there's a big warm of it store. We'll have all the details coming up in just a few minutes. I think it shocks me to this day when clients with breeds that shed ask me how to stop it. While there are certain dog breeds that do not shed, like the Shih Tzu, many, if not most, dog and cat breeds shed to some degree, and it's completely normal. How much a dog or a cat sheds varies based on their breed and hair type. Take Bruce Wayne here. He sheds more than all of my other dogs and cats combined. So, first and foremost, do some research when selecting a breed that's right for you so that you can make a well-informed decision. With that being said, there are some things you can do at home to help reduce shedding. First, regular brushing can dramatically help reduce the amount of hair in your environment. In addition to at-home brushing, having a professional groomer groom your pet can also help get rid of loose hair and undercoats when necessary. Talk to your veteran groomer about the best tools and options for your pet. 
Connect with us at our station website by looking up For Pet's Sake. We'd also love to see your favorite pet moments that you can share with our community. Go to our news app, click Explore, chime in and upload your Petastic photos. Enjoying the nice cold weather that we've been seeing. Look at this little doggo prancing through the snow. Thank you, Dennis, for sending in your adorable dog. If you have any pets that have been enjoying the weather or staying inside, keeping warm, send them to us, wcyb.com slash chime in. That's where you go to send us any photos that you want us to look at, and maybe your photo could be featured on air or online. Now, this morning is a very cold start to the morning. Here's Johnson City on our Ashley Home Store weather camera. You can see that there's not a whole lot going on. It's actually a very quiet morning, but temperatures right now sitting around 14 degrees in the Tri Cities. Thankfully, the winds are calm in the valleys, so our feels like temperatures are very close to what temperature we're actually at. Our satellite and radar showing a few clouds overhead, and as we go into the rest of the day today, we'll be dealing with maybe a few clouds, but lots of sunshine and warmer temperatures. We're going to be much warmer than where we were at yesterday. Highs will be in the low to mid 40s by the time we hit the afternoon and then as we go into the overnight once again we're going to be cold dropping down into the low to mid 20s across the region. Our threat tracker is at a medium for today mainly just because of how cold it is this morning as we go into the rest of the day that's going to go all the way back down to a low and then as we go into the week ahead of us we'll actually see some warmer temperatures. Take a look at what's going to happen as we enter the middle of the week from Tuesday all the way through Thursday we'll be dealing with highs in the mid to upper 50s and that is much warmer than where we should be for this time of year. Normally we're sitting around 47, but notice it's very short lived. Thursday into Friday, there is a big drop in temperature. That's because we're watching a cold front that's going to come through, not only bringing back some cooler weather, but also upping our chance for some rain. We haven't seen that in a little bit. We've been dealing with snow. Well, since we'll be dealing with warmer temperatures, we'll be seeing some rain instead from Wednesday all the way through the end of the week. We're watching this cold front as it's going to be developing across the Midwest. We can see that on future track as we go into Wednesday. Here's the front. Then as we go into late Wednesday. We'll see some rain out ahead of the front arriving, but the front itself won't be coming to our region until around Thursday. You can see the front passing through on the back side of the front. Remember, winds will be coming the, and shifting and coming from the northwest. That'll bring in some really cold air that'll transition that rain over to a little bit of a quick wintry mix early Friday morning, but then the front will be sliding out by the time we hit Friday afternoon, sliding off to the east, and we'll see some clearer conditions. We're getting a better idea of how much rain we're going to see and it's looking pretty decent. Most places seeing around a half an inch to an inch of rain. Some locally higher amounts are possible along the Kentucky Virginia border where around two inches of rain are possible. So definitely quite a bit of rain that we haven't seen in a little bit. But today we're not going to be seeing any rain. We'll see a little bit of sunshine and warmer temperatures. Highs in the mid 40s. Overnight tonight dropping down into the low 20s. So yet another cold night. But the week ahead of us is looking pretty warm. Both our daytime highs and overnight temperatures are going to warm up. Take a look at Wednesday night into Thursday. Right before the cold front comes through, temperatures will still be warm. Lows in the 40s Wednesday night. And then as the front passes through, our temperatures are going to drop back down into the 40s for our highs. Overnight lows in the 20s. Could see a little bit of a wintry mix on Friday morning, but then we'll see the sunshine come right back out for the weekend. Storm Track 5 weather cameras sponsored by your Tri-Cities Ashley Home Store. Saturday wasn't just any other game for Rick Barnes. For the first time since he was fired from Texas seven years ago, Barnes made his return to Austin, except he was on the other bench. Barnes has tried downplaying his return, but it's hard to ignore what he accomplished at Texas. A Final Four appearance and his 402 wins puts him as the winningest coach in program history. Before the game, Barnes receiving a warm ovation from the crowd. A video tribute displayed on the board above midcourt. Former 
former Longhorn TJ Ford, who was a part of the Final Four team when Barnes was head coach on hand to give his head coach a hug. Balls down two at the break, but Texas went on a huge run to start the second half. Courtney Ramey hits the three, and the Longhorns were up by 17, but with five and a half minutes to go, the tides turned thanks to Tennessee's pressure defense and execution on offense. The Vols went on a 16-1 run in the final five and a half minutes of the game to tie things up at 51. After a Texas free throw gave them a one-point lead with six seconds to go, the Vols had one last chance Josiah Jordan James gets a look at the buzzer, but it's no good. The Tennessee comeback comes up just a little bit short. The Longhorns hang on 52 to 51. Virginia Tech looking to bounce back from that tough loss to Miami on Wednesday. They were at Florida State. Sean Padula and Hunter Couture were dynamite from beyond the arc. First up, Padula catch and shoot three. He knocks it down, then off the dribble, steps back and buries it. Couture, it was no different for him. He creates some space and hits a three. Couture finished with 27. Padula had 20. The Hokie shot 72% from three. They go on to win at 85-72. It's their first win in Tallahassee in more than 30 years. Uh, I think it's just the next man up mentality. Uh, we can't like sit and pout whenever some of our starters are out or some of our best guys are out. Uh, it's just like we got to win the game. That's the most important thing. So if some guy goes out, you just got to pick up the wagon and take care of your job. After completing its first time through the SoCon schedule Wednesday night, the Bucks entered Saturday at 4 and 5. With five teams ahead of them in the standing, Saturday's matchup against VMI was a must win game. Desmond Oliver and his squad looking to avoid its first three game losing streak of the year. The first half was all about, Jose, er, was all about Jordan King and Ladarius Brewer for ETSU. King hits the triple, then Brewer connects on a triple of his own. Back comes King with a three. King had a career high 27. The Bucks up one at the break. Less than a minute to go, though. ETSU found themselves down one, but not for long, thanks to Ty Brewer. The tough shot goes, and suing VMI possession, though. Trey Bonham, the bucket goes, and a foul. He had a team high 21. Last chance for the Bucks. LA with it at the top of the key. He's gonna drive and try to get one in close, but it's highly contested. It's no good. Cadets go on to win it 83 to 79. The ETSU women also on the road on Saturday. They were taking on Wofford. There's a nice look at Sarah Thompson. She's been playing really well of late for the Bucks. Also getting playing well on Saturday was Demaya Griffin using the backboard to her advantage. Then it's Jada Rice getting it to go. Then Carly hooks off the bench. She had a nice game. The Bucks found themselves down nine at the break. Wofford would pull away, though, in the second half, which meant Sullivan Central grad Abby Crawford got some playing time. She hits that shot inside, but Wofford goes on to win it 73-51. to 51. That's a look at sports. Hope you have a great Sunday. Cap. If yesterday was too cold for you, don't worry. Today's going to be much warmer. Highs will be in the low to mid 40s this afternoon, seeing lots of sunshine. We'll actually see a lot of sun until about Tuesday. That's when we're going to see some cloud cover increasing out ahead of a, a cold front that's going to be arriving Wednesday into Thursday. But until then, we'll see a nice warm up. Look at Thursday's high 58, but we will be dealing with some rain with that cold front as it pushes through. And then back into the 40s, we go for our highs. Overnight temperatures go back down into the 20s. But I mean, if you like spring weather, this is a great preview. Yeah, at least a little bit of a yes, break. Yes, yes, we're going to get a taste of spring this week. Thanks, Jessica, and thank you for joining us this morning. Hope you have a great rest of your day.